Good morning, Cindy's Kitchen family. Today is an exciting day. I welcome you to our 250th episode of Cindy's Kitchen. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I, I say cheers to you because it is very difficult for me to believe that we have done 250 episodes. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot for you to watch. It's a lot for us to record. It's a lot for us to cook. Um, but it's very exciting. Good morning, Brenda. Good to see you. So, hi, Nina. Nina's on. Make sure if you're, if you're coming on, you say hello. This is a big day for me. Um, and so I, I wanna see who's all here. Good morning, Margaret, so good to see you. Thank you, Nina, I appreciate it. Um, it's a big day for me. Uh, it, it's kind of a milestone. Hey, Tommy from Beaumont, good to see you. Lois, good morning. Neela Ben, good to see you. Thank you, Brenda, I appreciate it. Everybody having a good day today? Look, look, isn't that pretty? I normally don't go for the like the solid blues, cause you know, but for some reason, this just spoke to me. So there you go. I mean, I've had it for a while. This is not a new cup. Thank you, Janet. Good morning and thank you. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Mom. The Milestone Lois. Today is our 250th episode. 250 episodes. Can you believe it? Gail is hot and humid in Chicago land. I, I know, Jody. It's pretty, isn't it? Good morning, Denise. Good to see you. Debbie, good afternoon, and I hope you have a good day. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hey, Linda, good to see you. We're gonna go ahead and get started because I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I had this idea in my head about mixing things together, and I don't know if it's gonna work. It may be gross or it may be yummy. Oh, Tommy, that is so wonderful of you to say. Thank you. Thank you from my heart, I appreciate it. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna start with. I really don't have a name for this because, again, it's all brand new. I'm just like making it up as I go along. Port St. Joe, Florida. Good morning, Maryland. 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 <laughs> hey, Joan. Sunny Illinois. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some jasmine rice. Okay, so that's from Thailand. Thank you, Alice. Good morning. I appreciate it. I'm gonna use a half a cup of jasmine rice. And now I'm not joking on this. This is like the mix of several countries. Okay, so, and I'm using jasmine rice just because I like the way it smells. I like the way jasmine rice smells. So that's why I'm using the jasmine rice. So we have jasmine rice from Thailand. Then I'm using some red lentils from somewhere. But you know, Middle Eastern, uh, you, you find lentils in a lot of Middle Eastern cooking, okay? I like red lentils. All right, so I'm gonna use a half a cup of the jasmine rice and a half a cup of the red lentils, okay? If you've never cooked with lentils, it's kind of like a pea, right? It's a legume. Um, you can cook them till they're all mush. It is an international fusion, Heather Lynn, you are correct. All right, so, so we have jasmine from Thailand, we have some red lentils, and then, okay, so this is just our rice. Look at that. That's our rice and our red lentils. And I'm just gonna cover that with water. Kathleen, it's still hot in Illinois? Well, it's hot in Houston, too. All right, I'm just gonna put some water over here. And so normally, I know you don't have to do it, but I tend to rinse my rice and my lentils. Um, part of it, I don't know, let's just clean it, whatever. Uh, with the rice, I find that it, some of that gluten kind of comes out of it. Or starch, maybe it's not gluten, maybe it's starch. 
Hey, Diane from West Michigan, good to see you. Okay, so can you see the water's already cloudy? It's cloudy water, yeah. And you can pour the water out and redo and redo and redo until the water's clear. I don't necessarily do that, but I do, I do do a little, I do do, I do do. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit here. And then, let me get my big, let me get my big pot. I'm using this. I'm using the big pot, the big purple soup pot, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna put in here is some pork chorizo. If you were with us on our shopping trip to Fiesta, you know that I got this on sale for 99 cents, pork chorizo. Rinsed rice makes the best rice. I think so, but I don't know that I have any, any proof of that. Okay, scissors, oh, there they go. Okay, I'm gonna tip the end off of that. Mm. All right, so there it is. There's our chorizo. We did, good morning, Debbie. Good to see you. Lois Ann, you're here too. All right, so we're gonna squeeze all this into the, now remember, I got the beef too, but I'm only, I decided to use the pork. So chorizo, this chorizo is from Mexico. No, let's see. Yeah, from Mexico. So the, so we have jasmine rice from Thailand. We have lentils from the Middle East and we have pork chorizo from Mexico. All right, so there we go. I squeezed it all out of there. There's my chorizo. Uh, let me break it up just a wee tad. Turn on that. Oops. I'm gonna use the, the flat edge spatula. Good morning, Joan. Hey, Sharon, good to see you. Just gonna break this up now. Um, I'm also gonna cut an onion to put in here, and you know, normally I would put some oil in there. Okay, see, that's what I did. I just smashed it up, and I'm gonna put that on the stove. I would say a medium-high heat, which is what you should probably do, but I have it on a high heat, because you know how I am, right? I'm gonna tilt you down just a wee tad. Um, I have one white onion here. Again, if you were with me at the grocery store, you know that I paid 33 cents a pound for these. How funny is this? right? But I, I really do use everything I buy. And um, we had beans and beans and cornbread yesterday. They were so good. Oh, and then my friend, um, uh, my friend Vicki is not on because usually, hey Susan, good morning. Um, normally she has a farmer's market on Saturdays that she goes to, that she works. And, um, but my friend Vicki, sent me um, chow chow from the, I think it's from the Amish, and it is so good. And so I had a huge bowl of beans with chow chow, and then a big block of cornbread. Late to class again. Susan, tardy, tardy slip for you. Good morning, Anne. Anyway, so, uh, and I smooshed my cornbread. I don't know if you guys do this or not. If you eat beans and cornbread, or beans and rice and cornbread, I didn't make rice, because I knew I was gonna make rice today. Um, I crumbled the cornbread in the bottom. This, oh, oh, the onion is getting to me. Uh, I crumbled the cornbread in the bottom. Then I put the beans with plenty of juice, because you need that to soak into the cornbread. And then I put the chow chow on top, and it was delightful. What's in chow chow? I'll get the jar out in just a second, Joan, and show you. All right, so I had a small white onion right there. See, I'm gonna put that in the pot. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, so see our chorizo, it's cooking. And I'm just gonna dump the onion in here and give it a stir. Hold on. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. All right, so I'm gonna give that a stir. So because the chorizo has so much grease, if you will, flavoring, um, I, I'm not putting any added oil in there, okay? So back on the stove it goes, because really, and I, I am gonna add just a wee bit of salt. Not a whole lot, because the chorizo's got salt in it. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. Right, right when you put the onions close to the camera, your eyes started watering. <laughs> I like that, Loisanne. That was funny. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we have so far. We have jasmine rice from Thailand. 
We have red lentils from the Middle East. We have pork chorizo from Mexico. And we have a white onion. So that's what I've got so far in there. Now, um, I haven't put the, the lentils and the rice in there. They're just soaking in this water. As soon as the chorizo and the onions, really, I don't care if the chorizo's done just yet, but I want the onions um, a little translucent because I don't want to bite the onion. I want the onion to be, mmm, ah, oh. So there you go. Now, the other things I'm going to add to this, and again, how weird is this? This is just like, I was sitting there going, hmm, I wonder how this would all taste together. And so here we go. I am gonna add a little tomato paste. I am gonna add, this is gonna be, this is what started the thing. This is harissa. Now, has anyone used harissa or heard of harissa? Let me tell you what it is. Now, this is a harissa spice mix, but there's a harissa sauce. And it is like the red condiment that's like ketchup um, in Tunisia. Tunisia. So this is a, harissa is originally from Tunisia. It's a chili sauce or a paste. It's made out of dried chilies, garlic, citrus, extra virgin olive oil, and some other like warmer spices, right? Like cumin and coriander and caraway seeds. I mean, aren't those all like, wow. Now, um, you could find the sauce or the paste like in a specialty grocery store, or you can make it homemade, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a sauce to go on top of everything, including I'm gonna season everything with this, um, but I'm gonna make a sauce just using the spice blend as well. So what does it taste like? Um, the sauce kinda has a, it's mild, but it's got a little kick. It's sweet, it's smoky, it's a little tangy. It's really good. All right, so. Let's take a gander at our onions, and if our onions are done, then I'm gonna go ahead and put the rice in the, um... well, we're getting there, not yet. Can you see? Do you prefer those shows? I know I don't have, somebody asked me today, like what equipment I use on the show, like I have fancy equipment, and the answer is I have a tripod that my phone sits on and the phone. Do I have fancy lights? No. Do I have a fancy microphone? No. I'm sure that you guys probably, do you, do you prefer those shows where there's a camera and you can look down into everything? I mean, maybe that's good. You did in Morocco. Okay, well, let me just tell you how jealous I am, Gail, that you've been to Morocco. I have never been to Morocco. So anyway, all right. So while, that we're almost there. And so then I'm gonna drain the water out of here. Look how cloudy that is. You see how cloudy it is? Cloudy. That's our jasmine rice and our red lentils. And why did I mix them? What I'm doing is fine. Okay, good. Um, why am I mixing them? When you're cooking lentils, sometimes they have a tendency to get mushy. Now, some people like it that way. So it's almost porridge-y if you will. So if you mix the rice and the lentils, you have, um, I think, a really good um, uh, contrast where the rice still has a little bit of a bite and the lentil has a little bit of the mush. And so to me, best of both worlds, right? Did anybody notice that I got a haircut? Did you notice I got a haircut? Look, got a haircut. Nobody said, hey, Cindy, your hair is shorter, but I got a haircut. So there you go. All right, that looks good enough for me. Look, 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 you see? Mmm. I know that a lot of you probably, well maybe, I don't know, but maybe several of you stay away from chorizo because it, it looks so greasy. And, and it is, it does, it does give forth a lot of stuff. That being said, I hope you give it a shot because I, it's just got such great flavor. All right, now I could go to the sink and drain this, right? But I don't know. I'm just gonna use my spider and pull it out. So look how colorful that is, right? Whoops, I made a mess. 
All right, so in we go. Rice and red lentils. Yes, it would probably be easier if I went to the sink and I poured the water out, right? But I'm not doing that. All right, so there. Ta and da. Oof. So now, boy, I did make a mess. I made a mess. All right, so I'm gonna put those in there and I'm gonna let the rice, um, I'll give it a stir, but I'm gonna let the rice and the lentils toast just a little bit. Because you know, a lot of times when we make rice, we, we put the rice, you know, we bring water and salt and butter or oil or whatever to a, to a boil. Then we add our rice. Then we bring it back to a boil. Then we put the lid on it, put it down low for 20 minutes. I mean, obviously, oh, Joan, you make me so happy. Thank you, Joan. I appreciate it. Um, and so we boiled the rice, right? Which is fine, but you can get another layer of flavor by kind of toasting the rice. And you will know this if you've ever had like rice aroni, right? Now, rice aroni has rice and pasta in it, if you, if you didn't know that, right? And so there you go, toasted rice. Yeah, it does add flavor, doesn't it, Beverly? Um, hey, Joanne, good morning. Uh, so anyway, while I'm waiting for that just to toast just a little bit, and then I'm gonna add my tomato sauce, my harissa, and water. So, cause we have to have water for the rice to cook, right? Um, and I'm thinking about adding some veggies. I think I might. I've got a bag of frozen peas and carrots. I may not add all of them, but maybe half the bag. The San Francisco treat, that's right. Rice, a roni, the San Francisco tree. Yep, I grew, I, I love that song, right? I think I might also add some fresh parsley, okay? Just because you know that I always like just a little hint of fresh. Oh, hello, my little baby girl, Larissa. Good to see you. 250th show today. 250! Can you believe it? Can you believe it? No. Oh, Larissa, Jessica just said, I make, I'm using Harissa for Larissa. Or if my roommate, my law school roommate is named Carissa. So I have a, a Larissa and a Carissa and I'm making Harissa. <laughs> okay, giving it a stir. Okay, now I want to show you this. Remember when I showed you the, the chorizo and the onions, and you could see all the grease at the bottom of the pan. Do you remember that? Okay, look, since I've added the rice and the lentils, look how the rice and the lentils have soaked all that up, which means the rice and the lentils are going to be so full of flavor. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Susan. All right, so just a little bit longer. Again, we're just toasting. And then we're gonna add this other stuff. I better chop my parsley though. I'm curious, um, just because, you know, 250 is a lot. We've made some mistakes, right? We've done some things that eh, were okay. Share with the class, if you will. Oh, and you have a daughter, Alyssa, how funny. <laughs> Share with the class. Um, did you learn something from Cindy's Kitchen? Did you find a new recipe that you really like from Cindy's Kitchen? Were you just humored by Cindy's Kitchen? Did you just get a chuckle from Cindy's Kitchen? Tell us something um, about your experience with the show. Because <clears throat> I'm interested to know. <clears throat> All right, so I just have a handful of flat leaf Italian parsley, and it's really not a whole lot. Because I got it off the plant outside, and, and I'm telling you, my parsley is not doing, my parsley and my cilantro need help. It needs help. Oh, mom, you're so sweet. Yes, yes, and yes. Isn't that weird? All of the about, well, isn't that weird that we, you know, cause like my mom, when I was growing up, I didn't like to cook at all. I mean, it was kind of a joke in the family um, that I couldn't boil water or brown anything. 
And it really wasn't that I couldn't do it. I just didn't want to do it. So, oh, you like, you've used a lot of the recipes. Great, Janet. And you love the field trip to the store. That was fun. A whole file to your recipe box. Oh, that's so fun. Thank you, Joan. The scrap soup. Yeah, the scrap soup stock. Yes. Good, good, good. Oh, Joan's made several of them. The Greek dip. Wasn't that wonderful? Your teenage boys love to chiffonade. <laughs> oh, Marilyn, thank you. All right, so we're going to pull this back over. We've toasted enough. And look how it's all soaked up up in there. Look, I'm going to tilt this. Oh, I wish you could smell. Oh, how fun. Yeah, the Polish pottery. Isn't that funny? But you know what? I think a lot of people, you know, it's just like dishes. You say, okay, I can only use this dish for a certain thing. The vanilla and the sausage dish with the potatoes around the sauerkraut. Oh, yes. That was my grandmother's recipe. Yeah, lots of recipes. And the courage to step out of the box. Linda, you touched my heart. Okay, so I have a, what do I have? A six-ounce can of tomato paste. That's going in. Several kitchen techniques. That's good. Yeah, I had a lot of fun on the field trip. I was worried because, you know, we went long. We were there an hour and a half. And I was worried you guys would get bored because, you know, I was basically just walking up and down aisles saying, ooh, oh, look at that, right? That was, that was basically what I did. I, I was really afraid you'd get bored. Now, I'm going to use a whole tablespoon Oh, because I want this dish, this is like I'm calling this a harissa dish. So I want a lot of harissa flavor. We are, uh, you made your own taco seasoning. That's awesome. I can't wait to go back. And if I missed a comment and, you know, after the show, I go back and I reread all the comments um, in case somebody asked a question and I missed it. Okay, so a tablespoon of the harissa powder and that's going in there. Oh, Yum! It smells delightful. Harissa for Larissa, or that's a lot of laughs. I know, right? All right, now I'm gonna, I gotta add some water. Cause remember, we're making rice. The jasmine rice is like one and a half. I used a half. Harissa, okay, I'm gonna, I'll go back over that. So I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use a cup of water. Now, if I need to add some more, I will. <clears throat> Um, but I want to, now look, see the tomato sauce, I gotta, I gotta kind of break up in the water. Oh, and I may need to add a little bit more water because I have the rice and the lentils. Oh, you know what? I am. Because I want to add the, uh, I think I'm going to, veggies or no veggies? I think I'm going to add another half a cup. There we go. Half a cup. And then I think I'm adding the veggies. So, um... So, Judy, harissa is a spice. These are just frozen peas and carrots. Frozen peas and carrots, okay? So, I'm going to add about half, half a bag. Let me see. Yeah, half a bag. Then I'll have the other half. Veggies, yeah, I know. We needed something. And then just, I'm going to save some for the top. So, but, um, so I'm going to put a, a sprinkle of the fresh flat leaf Italian parsley. The baby food carrot cake, winner, winner. That was good, wasn't it? Now, you notice I didn't do salt or pepper or garlic, right? How many of you are shock and awe, right? There we go. Back on the stove it goes. And that's all I'm going to put in it. But I am going to make a harissa sauce, okay? And, and you can use this as a dippy sauce for anything. Right, you could use it for anything. And in Tunisia, oh, Joan, so you were asking. So this is, um, a, harissa is originally from Tunisia. Um, it's a condiment when you make the sauce, right? Uh, what is in the harissa sauce? It's a chili sauce or paste, although this is the dry spice, and it has dried red chilies, garlic, citrus. Um, when you make the sauce, olive oil, 
and then cumin, coriander, and caraway seeds. All kinds of, I mean, think about all those different flavors, right? Okay, so I'm just using, this is, um, I don't know what we call these. Uh, a bathroom cup or a, I don't know what we call these, but you could use a small bowl. I'm just using this because then I'm gonna use it as a dip and I wanted the little spoon and it matches. And so I thought that would be easy. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna use equal parts. I really need hot water. Hmm, hold on. I'm gonna put this in the microwave just because I need some hot water because, you know, that's how we make this. All right, so let me start. Oh, it's starting to boil. Oh, it smells delightful. Delightful. <laughs> All right, as soon as it boils, I'm gonna put the lid on it just cover it up and let that rice cook. Okay, so obviously, if you were gonna make homemade harissa, you would take dried red chilies and you would rehydrate them and you would cook garlic and you would do all this fresh. I'm cheating. But cheating is okay every now and then. So to make the sauce out of this like dried powder, right, the dried spice, we're going to use equal parts of the harissa, olive oil, and hot water. So equal parts of those three things. So I'm gonna start with, oops, I got tomato sauce, ick. Ick, I have tomato sauce on me, yuck, 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 yuck. Okay, I'm gonna start with the harissa, okay? And I want enough for us to um, be able to, to use as a real sauce, you know, not just a little tiny bit. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of everything, okay? Let's see, is that enough? No, let's do three. I'll use almost all my harissa. Okay, so I'm gonna do three tablespoons of everything because I want enough sauce to, there we go. All right, so there it is. There's that powder in there, just the powder, okay? Look, I almost used the whole thing. Checking. All right, we came to a boil, turning it down to low, putting the lid on it, just like we would do if we were making rice, right? All right, so there we go, three tablespoons of our harissa spice mixture. Now, I'm gonna do three tablespoons of olive oil. Could you use canola oil? Well, I suppose, but is it spicy? It's got a little kick, but not like, whoa. It's not like, you know, like hot, hot. It, it's like a, a warm spice. All right, so we did three tablespoons of the powder, so we need three tablespoons of olive oil. There we go, three tablespoons of olive oil. And now we need three tablespoons of hot water. Why the hot water? Because if, if you use the hot water, it'll make the, the powder melt easier. One, two, and three. Okay, so there we go. Look, I still have tomato. What, did I throw the tomato sauce up in the air and put it all over me or something? I think I did. All right, so olive oil, hot water, and the paste, okay? And now we're just gonna stir it. Now, this will thicken up just a little bit as it sets, but quite frankly, see how it's a water? It's, it's a, this is a sauce. We're using this as a sauce. If you want it a little thicker, you certainly can um, add a little bit more paste, but for, the, for everything to taste right, like, let's just do this. Oh my God. Mm. There are spices in here that you're gonna go, what is that? It's not hot, but it has a nice little kick, a nice kick, not a like a jalapeno or a serrano pepper kick. All right, so there we go. There's our little sauce. Yum, yum, and yum. We're gonna pour that over. All right, now we need, um, we need some time for our made up dish to cook. 
So, because of that, I thought, but I need your help. I, remember when we bought these at the store? Now, I remember that these are called Rambutan. Remember these, the prickly little things? They're called Rambutan. Sounds like a drug. It does. Rambutan. <laughs> are you suffering from, <laughs> no. <laughs> Have Rambutan, right? But then we also bought this. And I know that right now it looks like a, it looks like a red potato, right? Like a one that's not very good. But I can't for the life of me remember what this is. Does anybody remember what this is that we bought at the store? I can't remember. Not as, oh, it looks like a sea urchin, doesn't it? But it's not. This is Rambutan. Okay, so one of the things say that you twist and it should open. But, I, but the other thing says you may have to use a knife. So I'm gonna twist. Oh, it's juicy. Nothing is happening with the twisty. It could be because I'm a dead peach. Ha ha ha, Debbie. <laughs> it's not a dead peach. All right, so I'm gonna use my knife. Oh, wow. Do I cut this? Is there a seed in the middle? Yeah, yes. Oh, there's a seed in the middle. Okay, hold on. I cut it. Oh, look, there's the fruit. Ta-da! Look, it's like a little, it's like a little egg. Look at that. Prickly pear cactus fruit. I don't think it is. Look at that. Okay, there it is. Now there's a seat. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Cool, huh? All right. So, I'm going to just take a bite. Mmm. Taste. Mm. It's very sweet. Can you see it's got that pit there in the middle? It's very sweet. Almost, almost like a pear. People make jelly with them. I can see why. It's very sweet. A grape on steroids. Yes. But more work because of the whole pit in the middle. Right? It almost has kind of a kiwi. I like it. I do, obviously, because I just keep shoving it in my mouth, right? It's very nice. I like this. And there's the, the pit. So, Rambutan, two thumbs up. Oh, no, it's not a kiwi. It had some weird name, and I don't remember what it is. But we're gonna cut it and find out. It doesn't really have a smell that I can tell. I'm gonna cut. Oh, I cut straight through. Oh, look inside. Look at that. Almost looks like a passion fruit inside, doesn't it? Who would have ever thought to open that thing to eat it? I know, you'd have had to been really hungry. Oh, tastes like. Yeah, kinda like a kiwi. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside. I don't know that we eat the seeds. Do we eat the seeds? I'm not gonna eat the seeds. I'm gonna get a spoon and scrape that out. Cause I don't think we eat the seeds. Does anybody, know? I don't know what it is. So how would you know if we eat the seeds, Cindy? Okay, I'm just scooping the seeds out. All right, there we go. Weird unidentified fruit. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. UFO fruit, unidentified fruit something. All right, I don't know if I'm supposed to eat the skin or not. Gosh, I wish I, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the show. I was hoping one of you would remember, but I'm just gonna use the spoon and eat some of the inside because you know, I don't wanna die on the show. Ugh. Whatever this is, is very sour. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, kind of like eating a lemon. Ugh. I'm glad I did this one first. This was really good. This, oh my goodness. 
That is gross. Ugh. But then again, you know what I don't, I don't like um, passion fruit either. It was a dead peach. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, maybe, I don't know. I could have a bad one maybe. I don't know, let me try again. Ugh, it was just gross. Oh, no. It's probably the national fruit of somebody and I've offended them. Oh, that is nasty. Cool. Coffee, coffee. Mm. Yeah, cause look, it's already starting to turn. It was fine when I got it, but it is starting to turn on the outside. It's starting to get little spots. So yeah, totally right. Totally nasty. <laughs> okay, so unidentified fruit, two thumbs down from Cindy. If this is your favorite fruit and I have offended you, my apologies, but mama doesn't like it. But rambutan, on the other hand, that we popped open and had the little, the little white, this is good. Maybe I'm supposed to eat the seeds. Okay, Diane, let's try the seeds. Ugh. Okay, there's the seeds. I'm gonna. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They're hard. They're very hard. Not eating that. Michelle, my friend, welcome to our 250th episode. Glad to see you again. No, Diane, black. Very black. Ugh. No, 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 no. Okay, so that's a big no-no in Cindy's kitchen. We shall not be eating whatever that unidentified fruit was. Although now I'm gonna go back to that video, rewatch it to figure out what the name of the fruit is, just so that there's no accidental purchase. Gosh, like, you know, I would forget that that was nasty. Cause really, if you looked at the two of these and you said, which one of these do you think tastes the best? This is not what I would say, right? I would say this one, but in fact, the rambutan was quite lovely. This, blech, 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 blech. Oh, look at our, look at our lovely sauce. Cause see, you know, that hot water and that oil has allowed all those spices to open up. Mmm, look at that. That is gonna be a good sauce. All right, now, what else? Oh, you know what we, we need to do? Pickles. Who watched the pickle episode? Let's check. Okay. Anybody watch the pickle episode? Pickle episode. I forgot. Oh, choco no sle. Choco, wait, choco no sle. Sometimes called tuna agria. That was what it was. It's from the U.S. And it's from the U.S. Yeah. Choco, it starts with an X, so it's, oh, choco no sle. Choco no sle, gross. Tuna agria, gross, nasty, gross. All right. Let's move on to pickles, shall we? Because that was nasty. Yay, pickles. Okay, so if you remember, um, we had a twofer on Thursday. Not only did we go to the grocery store, but then I got a wild hair when I came home because I bought all those pickling cucumbers and um, there was really no cooking to it. So I, I did a, like a really quick, I don't know, 20 minute show where we made pickles. And all we did is we shoved the pickling cucumbers down in there. We put a ton, an explosion of garlic in there that I smashed but didn't cut up. We did some peppercorns, a medley, la 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 la, a medley of peppercorns, four bay leaves, a bunch of dill, a tablespoon of salt, and covered the whole thing with water. And that was all we did. Now that was Thursday night. And I said we were gonna have pickles on Sunday. Now normally, when I do it this way, I really like them to set a few more days. Because the longer they set, the better they will be. But I promised, and so we shall have a pickle. 
Now, you see how it's still, see how full it is? You see all the, so that means I'm gonna have to kind of reach past into, let me see if I can get one. Ah, ta-da, big pickle. Oh my gosh, yum. All right, so, there we go. Yes, I did peppercorns. A medley of peppercorns was what I made. Okay, so here's our pickle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it in half so you can see the inside. So you can see the inside, see? It's a pickle. Mm. Can you hear the crunch? It's okay, but it really needs to sit in there for another couple of days. Because these were big. So what happens is the outside tastes good, but the inside still kind of tastes like a cucumber, which, hello, it is. So I like them in there at least a week. But you could eat them now if you wanted to. But I think it needs more time. So there you go. Pickles. Mm. I mean, I'll probably eat it. I'm not going to throw it away. But there you go. All right. Are we ready to, to plate up? I think we're ready to plate up. Now, remember that I have, I have mixed... I have mixed several countries. I'm gonna continue that. All right, so here we're gonna do, I have a plate. There we go. We're gonna have to have our little sauce, right? They do get better with age. Now, let me, let me, let me give a stir, see about my rice. Oh, yep, yum. Okay, almost there. We could eat this just like a stew in a bowl, right? Um, and that would be fine. Which, in fact, let me get a bowl. Hold on. I didn't get a bowl. One moment, please. What bowl do I want? Okay, this doesn't really match, but it's blue. So there you go. That's fine. See, that's fine. All right, so what I wanted to do is I got this garlic naan. Now, I know it says vegan naan bread. Oh, Dorada, we're, we made something very weird. Hey, Charlene, for our 250th episode. So... I thought it would be really fun to eat this with garlic naan. Now you can just get plain naan, but this is garlic naan, right? Um, they make this at H-E-B, but, although actually this is a product of Canada. Ha 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 ha, naan from Canada, right? How funny is that? All right, so I'm just gonna cut this into, you know, some, some bite-sized pieces. How about that? Little triangles. Should we do little triangles? I like, I love naan. I, the very first time I'd ever had, hey, you guys, stop that. The dogs are going after the cats. The very first time I had naan, we were at Disney, I think in the Wild Kingdom or something. There's a South African restaurant there and that was the first time I had it, and it was so good. Oh my gosh. All right, so let us get our dish. And then we will recap what is in our dish, because we don't even know if it's gonna be good, right? All right, so we started off with pork chorizo from Mexico. We added a white onion, diced up. We added jas a half a cup of jasmine rice from Thailand a half a cup of red lentils from the Middle East. We added um, harissa from Tunisia, originally from Tunisia, a can of tomato paste, some frozen peas and carrots, and some fresh flat leaf Italian parsley. <laughs> so 
We have mixed, and then I have non from Canada. I'm gonna mix up, oh, I'm gonna dust a little queso fresco on the top and some more of the parsley. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> so you see how it kind of looks like a stew? So you could just like, you know, those of you who um, don't want any added carbs, you certainly could just eat it with a spoon, just like this. But we're going to the next level. All right, so I'm gonna get this. This is the queso fresco that we bought at the store. So it's Mexican cheese. Cause you know what, let's just keep, I gotta, ugh. let's just keep mixing, right? All right. Look, have you ever used this? I love this. You gotta get the crumbly kind. La vaquera, la vaquita, I think. Look, and, and it is so good. Conosa tuna is in the prickly pear family. It's used in mole salsa or to accompany tequila, like a lime slice. Okay. All right, so there we go. Look at this. We got the little, we got the little cheese on the top. So here's what I thought I would do. I know I shouldn't use, I probably shouldn't use the, um, this spoon twice, but I'm going to. All right, so I'm gonna take my spoon. I'm gonna put a dollop of our stew, our harissa stew. Mm, look at that. Well, let me get some of that, because I want some of that cheese too, okay? There's the cheese, a little of the parsley, la la la. And just to send it over the edge, we're gonna put a little of that sauce, that harissa sauce on top. Oh, look at that. All right, you ready? Let's see how it tastes. It's very hot. Not like hot spicy. Very temperature hot. Mm, mm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Okay, it's messy. Mmm. You guys. This is two thumbs up. It does have a nice kick. So if you're like a no spice person, um, maybe you don't use this. I think this send it over the top. I mean, it's good. My sinuses are cleared out. The cheese on top, make, you get this nice little cream. Mm. Can you tell that there are lentils and rice in here? Not really. Sloppy Joes, yes. Mmm. 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 International Sloppy Joes. This is phenomenal. Mmm. Yay me. Mmm. <laughs> the 250th show. Wow, this is really good. Who'd have thought? I just, I just, there it is. Mm. Well, there's not, I mean, the chorizo is the worst thing in here, probably. Mm. Mm. Okay, you know I like it. I didn't just take a bite and go, oh, that was good. Mm. Come here. You can see her on, on camera. Oh, happy 250. You take it, you take it. I don't want to feed you. Okay, mm. Let them see. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right? Yeah. It's got a little kick at the end. Mmm. So many good flavors in there. Yeah, it's so perfect. It is, I know, right? <clears throat> it's like a medium. It's not like it's not hot. It no. is, it is. It's like a medium. Yep. Woo! Whew. Yay. <laughs> okay. Oh, your mom said hi. She said, hi, mother. So I encourage you, get out of your box, try some new stuff, buy a new spice, Harissa, find you some chorizo. Mm, man, that is so good. Ah, oh, and you know what? You don't have to use jasmine rice. You can use regular rice. If you can't find red lentils, you could use yellow lentils or green lentils. Doesn't have to be a particular. Um, but oh my goodness, this is really good. Yay me. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys had a lovely time. And again, thank you, Charlene. I appreciate it. 
Um, again, I just want to tell you thank you guys so much for joining Cindy's Kitchen, um, either from the beginning or whenever you came in. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that we've done 250 shows and that it all started, I really thought, oh, I love you too, Shell. Um, I really thought that we would do this for like two weeks because I had no idea that COVID would last more than two weeks or that my husband would be gone for 86 days or that after he came home, we would still be doing it. And so here we all are. And I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with me and becoming um, my other family that helped me stay sane during COVID. You guys have a lovely day and I will see you again on Tuesday. Bye-bye.